Good morning everyone. I'm sure you've all seen a quadcopter or drone before, especially those from DJI, they're very popular. But have you seen something like this before? Believe it or not, you can fly. As in, you sit inside and fly around just like a helicopter. Pretty incredible, huh? But completely electric. If you're wondering what all that honking is, they're actually putting together modernized jeepneys, modernized tricycles, all electric with solar panels on top. And they're doing it right here in Santo Tomas, Batangas. And uh, we're inside their factory now. So yes, local manufacturing or at least, oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Um, if not local manufacturing, then at least local assembly. They're trying to move as much of the process here to the Philippines as they can. But at the moment, a lot of the components still come from other countries. But yeah, thumbs up to Star 8 for, you know, trying to bring it local. Another thing that I'm not completely sure if I'm allowed to show, something that's coming soon, a Star 8 sedan, completely electric. Pretty cool, huh? They have a mix of lithium ion based systems, lead acid. It really depends on the use case. Some people who run these Jeeps, they like to do a physical battery swap. Some of them like a uh, fast charge. So it really depends on your needs, but yeah, pretty incredible, huh? And over here you have the electric big bikes. I actually have one of these. That's why you've seen it in my videos. And guess what? They finally went through the process with LTO, completed everything. They can now be registered. They can have an OR, CR, and a plate on the back. So that's pretty cool. Huh? Mine is up for registration now. So yeah, they're really doing things by the book. They're going through the process with LTO to make them road legal, to get them plates, to get them registered. And uh, they also have other designs. But they just started up the red one over there and it has a regular gasoline engine. But when they drove the green one, it had an electric engine. So maybe this is some kind of conversion program that they're trying, converting classic jeepneys into electric jeepneys. So that's interesting. Like I said, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to be showing all of this, so uh, I'll have to run it by Star 8 later. But uh, pretty cool, huh? So much stuff. I know I keep saying pretty cool, pretty cool, but it is, right? How amazing is this? I'm wondering if they designed and made these props themselves also, because they really do have some serious equipment. Like I saw in one of their other factories, they have this huge CNC machine, like absolutely ginormous, and they can mill or cut or CNC anything out of metal like they're making some really serious parts for their vehicles so uh yeah for those who say oh how about spare parts they can literally make them in their own warehouses either manually or using the cnc machine and if we take a look on one of their vehicles i just want to show you in case you haven't seen these in the past everyone has an individually controlled fan so you can turn that on up there plus you have usb ports by each seat See this? Oh, it's so dark in here. They're already working on other versions. Plus, I heard they're going for a two and four seater. I think they're putting together another one inside here. So this is really a serious production. That's the original one up there. That's the one that I showed in a previous video flying. Hello guys, I'm Kix Mendiola and I'm the creator of uh, Concepto Milenia. The, the one you see up there. So that's my very first prototype. And now I'm in partnership with Star 8 and the project is now called EMAB. So it's electric manned aerial vehicle. And what you see here is our first carbon fiber version of the one-seater. The one we've been posting and we've been showing that we're flying everywhere in Taal and here in Batangas. That's, uh, that's our prototype. That's basically aluminum and fiberglass. This is all carbon fiber so it's gonna be much stiffer much lighter so it will have better controls so right now we're completing the parts and making sure everything fits before we start assembly so as you can see this is now pure carbon fiber that one is fiberglass uh, this is gonna weigh around only I think 15 kilos Compared to that one, which is right now around 35 kilos, so half of it, as you can see, it's very light, but very, very tough. The good thing with carbon fiber is it's very stiff, so it's light and it's very strong. We had an R&D team now starting in U.S. Um, if you guys have seen the, when I posted that an astronaut came here, 
uh, Sir Scott, and now we're in partnership with him. Uh, they will be handling the the programming, the joystick, basically every everything that needs to be done in the computer system uh, to make it more safer and more stable, they, it will be handled by them. The one-seater, we're considering it more of a, like for hobbyists, so it can be your personal aircraft, let's say if you want to do a surveillance on your land, let's say you have a farm, you have a rice field, a coconut, banana, you can have your own fun while looking at your, you know, your place with a low, very low maintenance, uh, very easy to fly aircraft. That's what it provides. The technology is so amazing that uh, you can actually learn to fly this in one day. So, of course, that's besides learning all the rules and regulations of the uh, aviation, but just when it comes to flying, it is unheard of in the industry that you have an aircraft that you can learn to fly in one day and this has the potential to do that we've proven that concept so many times we had people who knows how to fly just small drones that's all they have that's the background that they have and they were able to fly this in at least two three hours of training with me just have to basically give them the the do's and don'ts uh, how to react to certain conditions and that's about it. If the government wants to use this for for purposes like that, it I think it's a very good idea. Having having been very affordable compared to real helicopters. Especially once we finish the two seater and we're actually building a four seater also. Um, that can be really that can really start um, changing everything because of course for the one seater it's not so efficient having only one person but once you have two or more in there then you can have the option of considering this as an air taxi um, having having this on all electric is such a big advantage meaning we can bring the cost down really really low when it comes to maintenance there's almost no maintenance on this just the batteries the motors will run for a very long time before it even needs any kind of check or replacement uh, if you have all your charging station on under solar power then it's basically free flights that's why it's it's such a good uh, technology to really invest on and I think Star 8 saw that potential that's why right now they're really spending a lot on the R&D making sure that um, we get the best out of this you know we have the the guy on the you want you want to yeah, show right now as you can see he's uh, doing the circuitry this is gonna be for the battery voltage so what I'm asking him to design is instead of looking at a voltage meter and looking at numbers which is very hard to do when you're flying i'm gonna have him do a uh, lighting meter so you will have three greens three orange and three reds every time i set a flight time on the on the emav right now my flight time on my weight it will all depend on the pilot's weight but on my weight, I can get a 15 minutes flight time on the one seater, 15 minutes straight, and that is with the reserve. And right here, we are designing the, the two seater, and the initial plan was to do a stronger, stronger motors for the two seater, but we realized that the one seater power, power system right now is capable of doing a two seater. We just have to basically add more motors and add more batteries and just do the math and we can already create a two-seater this year that's the goal so right now we're already we're already working on the format of the motors how we want it lay out because it will have to depend on because you cannot just put the motors wherever it is there's a certain pattern and we have to compare that to the computer system, what the computer system can handle. 
So which one, which motor to put, and how many to put. Right now, I've already done the computation on the two-seater. It will fly with 24 motors. Okay. So that is basically three octocopters. So we're running on octocopter configuration, and so that is, that is a very good redundancy for us. Technically, the, the one-seater can fly two people. But, of course, I have to consider the, the possibility of motor failure. So I cannot, I cannot compute it to the exact. You have to add redundancy. I always have to add. So right now, the one-seater has 16 motors. But technically, the one-seater can fly even with just half of that. Actually, in the beginning of this year, I wanted to have a good start. What I did was, because we've been flying last year for a whole year, so this year, I started the year by flying and taking off a propeller and actually being in it. Okay. Just to prove that the, that the system or all the computations are done right. So I, I sat on it, we took out, we didn't disengage the motor, but we took out the propeller, so basically it's the same thing. So it's like simulating a bird strike. We're so. simulating a bird strike or a motor failure or, a compute or an ESC failure. Um, I took out one. I flew, I hovered, I even did some basic uh, commands and it was perfect. I took out two, it was still good. Three, on the fourth motor, this is random, we take it in different spots. On the fourth, I started to feel a little bit of sluggishness. As we all know, when it comes to multi-copters or multi-rotors, the technology has got to the point wherein if the system is good, it, you barely have a motor failure, you know? If the, if the system, if the pair, the speed controller and the motor and the battery is all done right, if it runs, it runs. It will not fail out of, you know, just nothing. Funny enough, on the one-seater, just for fun, because we're, we're very light, I actually put in two people in there and we flew it. It, it got to the weight of around the maximum of 105 and it still flew good and it flew perfectly. And that's, that's, I think that will be the limit, but we will be, we will be pushing this for people to just use it uh, as around 90 kilos under. So let me show you the, how we do the molding and the pattern for the one and two seater. So we started with a forming the shape. Uh, do you want to go to the back? There's, there's a 3D printed uh, pattern there for the one seater. Okay. This is the mold for the Concepto Melenia, my very first prototype. So we had the mold here, but we're not planning to mass produce this for the reason that it's very, it was a one off for me. It's very hard to do, it's very hard. It's gonna be a headache to mass produce this version. That's why I made a more friendly design because, of, of course, it was my first time to build it. There was a lot of, uh, for me, I call it a um, learning experience mistake. Having the batteries beside the pilot is not a good idea. I think it's, uh, it's not so safe. So what I did is I made sure that the batteries is away from the pilot and the passenger. So That's one on thing. Corner. Yeah, second is the good thing about having the batteries out there, I, had, I was able to use shorter wires, and me meaning I get to save weight. Wires are very heavy. We're using really thick wires because we are, we're drawing a lot of uh, current and amps. I was able to take out about 25 kilos wow. use because of that design. Having the batteries out there close to the motors. This is actually the pattern for the one-seater. And this is in, made entirely from 3D print. Oh, this is 3D printed. Yes, this is 3D printed. That's why I wanted to show you. Um, we were able to 3D print the one-seater because it's not... It's not so big. What we did is we, we printed this on pieces. Mm. So let's say just the head. And then we just connected it all. Wow. But on the two-seater, we decided to do a, a different approach. What we did is we basically chopped this in the middle. And then we extended it to the side. And then we started working on that. Okay. But manually. Instead of wake. Because to print... Let's say this piece, yeah, must take a this piece time. will print for about almost five days straight. 
and if something goes wrong during the print, you have to do it again. Yeah. I think you do 3D printing I you're on your own. So you know, imagine printing this big and getting a mistake after three days. So you have to start over again, and you will get those mistakes. the The machines are not perfect. So you start with a pattern, and then from the pattern, you get the outside shape to get your mold, and then from your mold, this is the mold for the one seater. As you can see, this is called a tooling gel. So you can basically make at least probably 10,000 10, products using this mold before it gets bad or maybe even just do a little bit of repair and you can still use it. We will have probably five molds once we start doing mass production. So from here, we were able to make that. And that one is made from pure carbon fiber. Once you take apart the mold, you lay the carbon fiber inside and you put it on a vacuum bag. So that's our vacuum machine. You, you put it on a vacuum bag, you take out every excess resin to make it as light as possible and to also compress the fibers to make it strong. The carbon fiber tubes are ordered in China um, and then they are put together here. So this is the the pattern for the two-seater, once the pattern is finished, then we make the mold and then we make the product. So this is the pattern? Yeah. So this two-seater, this is fitted for um, people around even, kasi, because Scott came here and Scott is about, I think, 6'1 or 6'2, he's really tall. And we tested it on him. And him inside, even with a helmet, we already... He has headroom. He has headroom. So, as you can see in here, this is already long enough, but once you make the mold, the mold will come from outside, so it will be even bigger. So, we add a couple of inches or an yes. inch, maybe. Yes. So, I can't wait to fly this one. So, this is, the, this is my design for the two-seater. It has a gull wing door, meaning the door will go up. Just some added coolness. That is really cool. So, and it's also the most easiest and most um, comfortable way of going in. There's no doors on the right or left. Because when, when the door goes up, it will go over the frame and you will just have a clear space to go in. We're looking at this as a possibility for an air taxi. We already have a couple of orders from from different countries uh, that wants the unit. Um, hopefully, we'll have some orders also from the Philippines. But right now, we're catering to that order, and they will use it as an air taxi. It will be a short distance travel. We call it like a air hop. But because of the conditions on the place, it is the best way to do it instead of uh, instead of trying to. Uh, build a road or build bridges on their place they would rather fly and you can even get free flights and lower the cost more if you have the charging system under solar power right now uh, it's not even the best yet but we can already we have already tried doing two and a half hours of charging but for the air taxis that we're uh, building the target is usually, the plan is to do battery swapping rather than charging. You know, so you can have continuous uh, operation. Swap them, charge them. Swap them. So once this lands, the batteries are hanging on the arms. So you just hang it there, you lock it, you connect it, and then you're ready to go. Probably a 10 to 15 minutes procedure. So while loading and unloading, checking everything, doing a little bit of maintenance, you can already take off. So every station just has to be charging batteries or has batteries already ready for aircrafts to land and we can just continuously do that operation. We're also going to be working on a four-seater and it will be almost the same height but it will just be longer. So as you can see, the, the shape of the seat is on like a couch shape. shape. Meaning, just in case only one person tries to fly it, let's say he wants a really long flight time, so he gets a two-seater, flies a solo flight, he can still sit on the middle and keep the center of gravity. 
the more you get the CG right, the center gravity, the more the flight is more smoother because everything is balanced. This is where we test our thrust and this is where we do our basically torture on the motor. These motors have been running for more than 100 hours now. Is this the same one you're using? Yes. Okay. So each motor has a thrust capability of about, I think around 40 kilos. What, what I do is um, I get all the maximum weight. Let's say for the one-seater, I would put in 90 kilos of person, 120 kilo of battery, this and that. Let's say total to, to 300 or 320. And then how many motors do I have? I have 16. So divide it. Divide it. And then so I will know how much each motor is carrying. And then I will run it on that weight and I will see the, the time. So if I can run this for 15 minutes, if it's pulling, let's say, 21 kilos, which is the one-seater, each motor is pulling around 20, 21 kilos. And if I can get 15, 18, 20 minutes here, it's almost, it's not 100%, but it's around 95, 98% close to the real thing. And plus, we get to torture the motor here. Because sometimes, because when we fly, we fly for about 15 minutes, and then land. In here, we run this for hours and to see if anything will show up. And for the past year, there's none. So we've run this for a very long time. We've even run this while we're spraying water. Okay, to simulate rain. To simulate rain, no hard rain. Hard rain. Yeah, we're not suggesting that you fly on hard rain, but-, but Worst case, if something happens- Of course, out. yes, in case, it starts raining and you're already up there. We know that you will be safe because we we actually use a pressure washer, so it's even stronger than the rain. So we would really, we would hit this, we would hit this, we would run it, we would do that for for about half an hour, and, it survived. and then after that we stop the water and we still keep it running half an hour. It's like it's basically a real torture for the motors. It's like the worst conditions. This is a sample. Of what we can do on the on the machine. So this was CNC. This is CNC in house. So this is the motor mount, and underneath, this will be the one holding it. And you still have a safety pin going in the middle. That will be a titanium pin going in the middle with a lock nut in here. So just in case any of this gives, that pin alone in the middle is enough to hold it. So it looks like a pretty good finish because I've seen some CNC work online and sometimes they have a problem getting a good finish, but that looks pretty perfect to me. So this is uh, our prototype for a delivery drone. You can use this, let's say, for calamities to deliver food, water to those places that you cannot reach. Let's say it's flooded and all that stuff. You can bring in 50 kilos. So this can fly autonomously. This can also fly with a a wireless pilot, a wireless radio with a pilot. So right now this is can this is actually an order from a country. They will use this to bring down um, I won't mention the product but agriculture purposes. They'll bring down goods from the mountain going down. Because right now they're doing it by by a foot and it's very inefficient for them. And when they saw the technology, I think it's only like a 10 minutes flight. It can fly for 15 minutes with 50 kilos. So it can actually fly on a maximum payload of 80, but you get a shorter flight time. So the most efficient that we suggest is 50 kilos. So you get the full 15 minutes. And this will come with a, with a very aerodynamic head to cover everything. This is just a rough uh, design. We're just uh, still finishing it up. What's that made of the cabin? Uh... It's uh, carbon fiber. If you check my, my YouTube channel, uh, I had this prototype flying in Taal Lake, but it was used as a rescue drone. Okay. So we're just simulating that uh, this technology can do so much more. There's basically endless possibilities. What we did is we strapped a, a rope in it, a harness, and then 
we had a floating rescue device. Yeah, we had someone <laughs> swim and drown about, I think, 100 meters out. And then we just basically bring it there using the camera. And then the just needs to put it on and then pull them. We even tried pulling two guys and it can pull. Yeah, the multicopter or the drone technology, I think, has a lot of... Uh, a lot of potential in the future for a lot of things for man flight right now it's being it's being used mostly for hobbies and for filming but we're getting to that point that we're seeing the potential of it as a transportation and we can also use it for deliveries uh, you already have companies like uh, like Google and ano to? Sino yung mga delivery companies in states Amazon. Amazon, they all have their prototypes already, so they all know and they all see the potential of this helping out with the delivery system. You see it's already outside and they're just hooking everything up. I have to admit my nervousness level is going up a little bit at this point, but uh, let's just take it easy, right? I have had some training, so it's not like I'm just going to jump in this and I don't know what I'm doing, but at the same time it will be my first flight. So Kicks will be the first one to go up, which is probably for the best, to be honest. And uh, maybe that will put my mind more at rest, but I feel okay. There's a lot of empty space here. That's the thing, they have a big empty lot here. So uh, worst case scenario, just land it. Okay, let's move far away. He might be a professional, but still, I don't want to get too close. louder than I expected. Cell phone in your pocket. No cell phone, okay. Up the mountain, And they're now doing a sample of a battery change. So this is a team that made all this possible. It's a quick process actually, and they have everything ready. So this is potentially what you could do is a quick battery swap. And within 10, 15 minutes, you're back in action. So any last words you want to give to people? Pursue your dreams. 
always never stop just pursue it uh, in Filipino term we all we have this uh, saying na hanggat ano hanggat humihinga pa kaya pa so I started this project alone in in my kitchen in my condominium in a small condominium and now it's gone as big as almost now we're heading to mass production and it took a long time to do it it took me about what eight years of personally funding it slowly R&B mistakes basically I would I would the money I would earn from filming and from dancing I would save it I would buy some parts something that you will save up for six months it will burn up in probably five minutes you just keep quiet and you do it again until you make it and after eight years now it's here and now we have some big companies supporting us and about to go to mass production it's the craziest dream ever like there's more achievable dreams than this this is insane but if I can make this it means you know everybody can go after whatever they want because imagine when I started approaching people about ten year, uh, eight years ago saying uh, you wanna do this project with me I'm building a flying car <laughs> They, they don't <laughs> you would think I'm it. insane. Like it's you would never support it, you know. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't mind nobody supporting it. I, I completely understood why, because it's it's such a crazy idea, just a crazy crazy project. But I I had this gut feeling in me that there's a big potential on this. When I was building just small drones, I saw the potential. It's getting bigger. I was carrying bigger cameras. I saw the potential. It never left my head and finally I just jumped on it and one day I just told myself that from now on I'm only gonna use my money for this project. The rest is just for basic expenses. Everything, no savings, everything goes here until I make it. And I didn't know that it's gonna take me 8 years of R&D, hard R&D from almost going you know, broke. But I think it's paid off, right? Oh yeah. You're you're there. I think you're pretty much there um, now, right? Until I'm, until I see this in the air, using used by a lot of people, then I will feel that feeling that it's there. I made it. But right now, I'm still focused on. I'm always focused on the R and D and making sure it flies really good, as safe as possible. Uh, every time we do a test, every time we have guests. You will notice, you will ask, you can ask anyone here, I will always be the first one to fly. I will always be the first one to get in, make sure everything is safe before I put anyone there. So I've done that procedure since the start and I will not stop until everybody is flying this safely, enjoying it, enjoying the benefits, whether it's recreational for transport or even just for, for just pure love of flight, you know, or the dream of flying. Because a lot of people buy ultra lights. Yes. Just because they want to fly. They don't want to go somewhere specific. Exactly. Because exactly. they take off on the same spot where they land. That's right. They go back on the same spot. So it's it's the passion of flying. And if I can be one of the person to give you that, and that will be already that's a that's a dream of mine that will be coming through very soon, because we're actually almost there. We're almost ready for mass production. We're almost ready to to put this out and we have countries already interested i hope our our country also can have the chance to you know have this in our government but either way a lot of people will benefit from this and i believe it's a more safer way of transportation on when it comes to flying uh, the thing is for I was asked before why are you doing this there's already helicopters there's airplanes mm -hmm. and there's a sorry it's a long last word it's okay um, I was asked before why are you doing this and what's the point of it and I tell them for the longest time we've been using airplanes for long distance transportation and that's very efficient it's very good it's very fast and it's uh, practically safe and then for short distance we use cars and motorcycles but that's been that's being uh, that's been done for hundreds of hundreds of years now or 
how many years now, like 50 years. I don't know exactly the numbers, but since since the start of cars, we've been doing it. It's been good, but it's now getting to the point wherein it's not the most efficient anymore. We all know that. We've all experienced getting stuck in traffic nonsense over and over again, especially in the Philippines. And I think now it's time to consider why, what if we start flying even in short distance? Oh, it's too expensive because helicopter is expensive, the maintenance is expensive. Now here's the solution. It, 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 this, is not, this is not being built to compete with helicopters or airplanes. This is being built in a specific different manner wherein it can cater to something that they cannot, which is an affordable, uh, friendly, short air hop from one point eight, let's say around a 20 kilometer radius. You know, because Metro Manila is very small. I mean, it's the true. traffic area is only EDSA, that's what, 25 kilometers? And uh, usually the parts that you get stuck is only what? Like two kilometers, three kilometers, and you'll take you three hours in there? That's ridiculous. I think it's time to start considering air hops. Other countries are doing it. And if they, if they can do it and they're, they're investing on it, it means there's really something in there. And it means I'm not the only one crazy enough with the idea that this can actually be a good option. I'm not saying this can be the main, but at least if you remove 100, 200, 300 people off the road and flying, you know, it will start to to free some roads. You know, it's not the full solution, but it's an option. I'm giving you, I'm giving you guys an option that we can use. Right now, this looks like a, a hobby, toy, flying aircraft, only for the big boys kind of thing. But if we start mass producing this, this can go down. The prices can go down to almost the same as buy, buying an SUV, buying a Montero or a Fortuner, you know. Or, you know, a lot of people in the Philippines own really nice cars. And a lot of those people, if, if they start flying, then you lose a lot of people on the road, more on the air. And there's so much free space out there. The safe was always great. It was always risky to fly. It still is. But we're trying our best to make it as safe as possible. Like, like we, we don't stop. We never stop testing. We never stop doing our research. And I think a lot of countries are doing the same. And we're spending so much time and money on this. And everything is concentrated on safety. So, guys, go for it. Go for whatever you want. Whatever, whatever dreams or goals. It doesn't matter what age you are right now. I started this project. I was already... I'm 39 now. So, I was around 30s. I was in my 30s when I started this project. For all my younger years, I was dancing. And then after dancing, I feel like it got to the point of the highest that I can get to so I transferred to filming 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 exposed me to drones and then my my love for drones started and my curiosity for flight reignited because it's always been there everybody always, especially the guys the boys will be boys we always feel like we want to be like Superman you know you want to fly and it just so happens I never stopped Congratulations. So, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And congratulations on your flight. Thank you. Thank Officially you. Officially the eighth, the eighth person to ever fly EMAB. You will be part of our uh, electric veto history. Thank you. E veto history in the Philippines. I have one last question. Where are you from? What's your province? Or uh, My mom is from Romblon. So my mom is Visaya. My dad is from Manila. Manila. But I grew up in, I grew up in Manila. I, I studied in Manila, everything. But okay. growing up, uh, my dad exposed me a lot into RC. Remote okay. control cars. We couldn't afford airplanes. Back then, it was very expensive. Airplanes, helicopter, remote. Very expensive. So it's all cars, cars, cars. And I would always turn my car into something else. I would <laughs> make it in... I'm one of those kids. I will destroy something perfectly good to make it into something that's okay. okay. Like a boat or, uh, you know. So I grew up tinkering with stuff like that it never it just really stuck to me so I transferred wherever I, tra I transferred to filming I had no money I built my own crane I built my own drones I built my own cable cam 
So I've always been a DIY guy. And guys, especially for the young ones, you guys have no excuse. The internet is amazing. The internet can can basically give you a diploma on it. I learned uh, electrical engineering, uh, aeronautics, everything. Uh, everything that I needed to know about drones, I learned it from the internet and from personal application. So there's really no excuse. Before, on back on my years, oh gosh, there's no YouTube or Just anything. Just trial and error. Oh, now they're very lucky. This generation is very lucky and I think they should make the most, the most out of it. Uh, it's such a wonderful thing. The, the technology can be a good thing, but can, can be a bad thing, but you just gotta know how to use it. How did you transfer this to Ta'ao? Uh, so our design is actually a folding aircraft. So you remove three pins, and then this goes up. So when this is folded, this is only about seven feet. Just, we had to really make sure that it fits on the truck, so it doesn't get uh, pulled over for overloading so it fits on the truck it's seven feet wide about 10 feet tall and that's how you transport it the two-seater will be the same it will fold up to seven feet wide uh, but that one will be going down what was you saying about the first one oh, that yeah. you built so all of my builds i was trained to make sure that it's small and it's foldable or at least it, it can be disassembled because when I started this project, I started it in a condominium and I had to make sure my design can go out the door. I had to learn the hard way. There's one time, me and Andre, we, we did a design. If you check my YouTube, it's the one with the brown aluminum. We made that design and he already left for home. And then I was already in bed and then I realized, oh, how am I going to bring this out? So I went down, tried bringing it out, I couldn't. I had to chop some parts, <laughs> make some brackets, so that when I got to the field, I can just rivet it. Wow. So from there on, I had to make, I started measuring the elevator and the doors of the condo to make sure that my design can go out. And then the next challenge was, how can it fit in my small Montero? Wow. Because I, I, I had a Montero. I have a Montero and it must fit in there for me to be able to bring it to a field and then test fly it there. So basically, it's a whole day job. I will disassemble, I will bring it to the car in the morning, I will drive to the field. When I get to the field, I will disassemble, I will assemble, and I will fly, I'll do it all over. By the time I get home, it's already seven. I start charging batteries, and then in the morning, I do it again. Wow. And then if anything fails, I stop flying, I, I start fixing it, and it took me eight years. I did that eight years nonstop, continuously. Every time I have extra money, Let's say I have an extra 500. I would hire someone, let's say Andre. I would hire him for the day for 500 pesos to assist me on chopping aluminum or sanding something. So it was a very slow process. It could have taken me very... Right now, with the resources given to me by Star 8, we have a finished prototype almost ready for mass production in what, a year. So it means I could have done it fast, but I guess I had to go through that. You had to prove yourself uh, yeah, before someone learn. will invest. When I had my prototype, I started flying. No one still was amazed. I guess they're waiting for something that you know looks like an aircraft. So I had to build one, but it cost me a lot of money. So I had to borrow money from people who would actually you know <laughs> trust me. So and luckily enough, I have a very supportive girlfriend. So I loaned I loaned money from her. And I promised her to give it back with interest. And she did. She let me. She has no choice. So <laughs> I loaned money from her. I made the carbon fiber uh, prototype. And then I made the video. Shot everything. Edited on my own. I flew on my own. Everything. And then I marketed it online. Looking for investor. And then from there, I had four potentials. And one of them is Star 8. Because uh, Star 8 was the best option for me because they're from the Philippines I mean they're based in the Philippines and they do electric jeepneys they do electric product electric vehicles so it's a perfect match the rest are I had to move to US the other one I had to move to Japan the other one I had to move in 
also in US, um, Vegas. So those were my offers, and when I when I met Star Eight, they they said they're from Phil they're, they're based here. I was like perfect match. I don't have to go anywhere else because I wanted one thing I want is the mass production in Philippines because it's gonna create jobs. It's gonna generate uh, jobs for our people, and I think that's. And I think we are more than capable of doing this. We are very hardworking. Filipinos are very, very hardworking. They're known all over the world for very hard work. So, like, if you if you want quality work, you just gotta make sure that you know it's supervised, right? But it's uh, it's getting there. It, we're we're very close, right, team? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're all tired. <laughs>